give this Titanic project one more try. Well, we're going to give it a few more tries. In our last video, I tried the Titanic data set with Alteryx assisted modeling and got a result, I completed the thing. Um, and basically, I just kind of ripped through it as quickly as possible just to get a mark on the board, if you will. So we're, we're bracketing now if I can kick it back to my marine artillery terms. And, uh, and we're going to tweak some things. I'll talk a little bit about what I did the first time and the things that I've changed. And we'll, we'll see what the results are. I haven't submitted anything yet. I've got two different results to submit. We're going to take a quick look and, uh, and you'll be with me every step of the way. So let's go ahead and okay, share this screen. Come on, slow-mo, Joe. There we go. Okay. Um, so here's the new workflow. Now the, the previous workflow, basically I just, I brought the data in, um, and I've, I've kind of souped up the prep here a little bit. I'm keeping notes here, uh, I'm kind of big on annotations. So I'm trying to keep things together here, but here I've got made one container where this is my uh, prep and my training, training data set. And I've tweaked a couple of things there. This container up top here, I'm prepping the test data set and I've tweaked a couple of things there. And then um, these containers here, these are the build of the, the models that assisted modeling gives us. This time, talk a little bit about this. This time I built out two different models. One is a boosted model, which was the one we used last time. And the other one is a random forest model, which I uh, haven't generated an output yet, but I did run this boosted model and generate an output. Um, because I want to kind of keep track of different results, I'm now outputting to this top output here is going to be the, the CSV that I actually turned in to Kaggle to get scored. And then this bottom one here is just going to, every time I run the workflow, it's going to build another sheet onto an Excel workbook. That way I can kind of keep track of results as they go. And I've got a little timestamp built into it here. So we'll kind of know the the iterations of it. I may build in the name of the algorithm at some point, uh, but I don't know that I'll do too many more assisted modeling tools on this one. Okay, so what did we do? Um, so the first time, if you'll recall, we got, uh, that was three days ago, got an accuracy score of 0.773, just round that off. Um, and, and basically I took the easiest way out for everything. So we had a couple of null rows for the embarked value. I just filtered those out, just got rid of them. Um, I replaced age with a, uh, a whole, like a population mean, um, just, just took a mean and I did that through the, the model build. Now I'm prepping these things in the, before I build the model. Um, so population mean was 29.67. I didn't really account for anything other than just the average age overall. Um, so the ideas that I had there, and then in the in the test set, I did the same thing. So just a population. Now the test set is smaller. It's uh, 418 records. And all I did was get a, a population mean for the two kind of null variables we had there was age and fare. Um, so I just got an overall population mean for those, substituted that for anything that was null, and just ran it. Um, so 0.773, we'll see if we can beat that this time. Second run here on, uh, it's the 10th of August as I record this. Basically, I grouped, um, grouped by uh, sex or gender and passenger class. And so I got kind of a localized... Uh, more of a localized mean for age. And then I took the mode for the embarked value. So rather than filtering out, it's only two rows that we have. There's a null for the embarked value. And there's a heavy mode, I think it's S. Um, I tried to get like a localized mode for that. It's really just the same for each. So here we've got the mode for the embarked value is S, regardless of what class you're looking at. All good there. So I just imputed the S value for those two rows that were missing it. But then there were qu actually quite a few where the, the age was missing. Um, so based on the groupings of passenger class and sex or gender, um, I imputed these, uh, these av localized averages or localized means 
for you know the third class female average age was uh, just under 22 third class male 26 and a half first class male 41 first class female 34 so that probably will get us a little bit more accuracy in the model built those here in the summarize tool joined them back in replaced them in the formula got rid of um that got rid of those uh mean fields that we brought in and then brought it into assisted modeling now let's take a look this will take a second to cook here but in the assisted modeling i had a very close accuracy score between the xg boost model and the i think the random forest was the other one i had um so i went ahead and just built out both of those thus far i've only generated the the boosted model um but we'll take a look just want to take a glance at some of the things that you can actually see through the assisted modeling process we'll take a look at the uh, the relative strength of the variables between the two models because that's something kind of interesting to compare but you'll see there's really only uh only kind of a couple of tenths of accuracy difference between the two and what it comes down to when you look at the confusion matrix of your uh, type one type two errors what it comes down to is there's only like two rows prediction difference um between the the two models i'm gonna pause this this is taking a little bit to dial up uh oh um we shall see if this is even going to work let me pause this and then when i get this kind of back in the fight all right that took a second to uh get back in the fight but here we are um so this is the result screen of the models that we ran you can see that we got four models here xg boost random forest uh log regression decision tree you can see that xg boost and random forest had very close accuracy scores 82.5 and 82.3 and log regression decision tree kind of lagging behind a little bit there here in the overview you can see that um xg boost so we can see xg boost here got um like i said 82.5 percent of the predictions correct and there's only a couple differences so here you got 735 correct random forest only two less not sure you know i'm not really going to go row by row and try and figure out which is you know how many predictions were different I, I actually did that in the uh in the workflow afterwards and it just it wasn't super informative um but here we go so this part is kind of interesting this shows the relative power of the variables with xg boost you see there's kind of it's super top heavy sex passenger class and age are the bulk of them well I actually look at this a little bit more down the line i want to do some more kind of simplistic models use the predictive tools instead of the assistive modeling is going to give you a bunch of algorithms and say compare them all and say which ones do you want i want to go through and kind of do this a little bit more manually maybe do a stepwise regression and compare these models and see if we can get some more uh, parsimony i believe is the term some more simple models so but right here with xg boost you see three variables kind of dominate everything and then i think this is sibling count fair um parts is like total passengers and pets or something like that anyway and embarked really had was a negligible feature so like i'm not sure what the cutoff is but it really didn't matter much with random forest you saw that not only were all uh seven of these variables non-negligible they were all significant but you see that embarked um embarked which was negligible on xg boost is actually the third highest and you see that after the after sex which is um, the most likely predictor of survivability. We've all seen the movie. The you know the the men heroically kind of let the women and children get on the lifeboats first for the most part. Um, but that was the strongest predictor of survivability. Then class next. The rich people probably got got better spaces on the boats or more boats or something like that. Um, but then you saw that the the embarked class, which I I have to go back. I'm not exactly sure what the values are there but that was a strong predictor. So good thing that I brought those two rows back in. Again, first run was just like, hey, I got nulls here. The heck with them, just toss them. Uh, there was only two of them, but uh, we may see some advantage here with, with the random forest. Okay, so that's about all we're gonna look at on, um, on the assisted modeling. Went through the process last time. We don't really need to do that again. Uh, the, the process really wasn't terribly different this time. I got rid of the same kind of ID variables 
um, the, you know, like the ticket and the birthing, where there's a ton of nulls and there's a whole bunch of different codes, the passenger ID that, you know, a, a unique and granular ID has no predictive power in the model. Uh, may take a second to get this screen to close out. Sometimes, sometimes the, uh, the processing power of my computer gets a little bit taxed, just doing the data science stuff and also making a video. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll duck away, get this cleared up, and then we'll take a look at one last look at the workflow and then we'll submit the score. Okay, here's the, the whole workflow here. So we've basically just run everything through the XGBoost and we've got the model output. I did, um, yeah, like I said, did it localized uh, averages for age and fare. There was no embarked nulls in the test data set. So basically did the same prep for the test data set that I did for the training data set, just bringing in and, and again, grouping by class and sex on those embarked passengers and seeing how we can predict. I did compare real quick the last time's output to, I, I already ran this and got an output for the boosted model. So here I compared what I did on the seventh three days ago for that initial run and compared the boosted model. We did have, as you can see here, we did have eight different prediction outcomes. So we'll see if that uh, is an improvement or not. Um, so let's minimize that. And then here we've got our output for today. And here's our Titanic page. So let's go ahead and submit a prediction. Let's drag and drop this bad boy in here, enter a description. And we can go ahead and say attempt number two. XG boost model produced by Alteryx assisted model assisted living. No, I don't think so. Assisted modeling. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh, let's let it rip. Submit that and out. Oh, did something weird happen? Come on, unexpected column. <sighs> I named the column wrong again. You silly thing. All right, give me a second. Looking around my. Uh... Yeah, so it's called Survive Predicted. This You got to submit it. Ah, I'll just. Let's fix that there. Okay, save you. And now let's just take this. Come here, you. Let's just rename the column. Okay, survive predicted. I think not, just survived. There we go. Control S, go away. You minimize, you come here. Bang, oh, submit prediction. There we go. All right, oh, I gotta type this again. Now I'm good. Um, let's just say XG boost attempt is just for me anyway number two there we go submit that bing bong bing same score <laughs> okay neat so eight predictions changed all right well let's run uh may have to pause you again but let's go ahead and run i'm gonna i'm gonna pause this i'll come back we'll run the uh the random forest model compare scores and uh, and see what's what Coming back, so we uh, ran the random forest model and produced, and what I found was there's actually a significant difference between the output of the random forest model and the output. Here's the the XG boost model, this 150126. So I ran that at three o'clock, and then here's the random forest model at 444, and there is 33 rows different prediction. So we may see a significant difference here. So I'm uh, actually kind of excited for this one. Let's give it a whirl. Titanic, let's submit our third prediction. There you are. Okay, 1644, you are up. Attempt number three, random forest model. All right. 
Let's see how it does. Better. Okay. Not necessarily, not by much. 0.7799. Okay. So that made a difference. So uh, let's take a look at the leaderboard. Jump to my leaderboard position. Ooh, look at that. That, okay, that made a staggering difference on the leaderboard because 0.7727, which we had before, put us at like almost position 10,000. Uh, 0.7799, we are at position 3,353. Neato. And it looks like we're tied with a lot of people above us. It looks like 0.7799 is a pretty uh a pretty common score but uh, out of the whatever the sixteen thousand and some submissions to be up in the three thousand position that's uh that's actually not bad so hey um machine learning assisted modeling tool muy bueno uh pretty happy with that so steven yang well done um these, these people that got a thousand like perfect accuracy yeah okay got it um there's nothing to stop you from just going through the data set and setting the values to whatever you want. So, all right, bro. Yeah, go you. Um, but that, yeah, there we go. So um, a much better submission. I really look forward to kind of working forward on this. I don't know how many more iterations we'll do, but there are definitely other tools that I really want to get into here in the predictive tool palette. Um, we're not going to do A-B testing or, or time series or anything like that, but um so yeah i don't know how much more we can really tweak the assisted modeling to get that better mm, got a couple of ideas I may, I may watch a couple of videos to get some ideas of you know what other things can we do with the with the data set to get the model more accurate really the the assistive modeling process does a lot of that for you so i don't know how much uh hay we're going to make there but with the yeah, with the test data set, I'm not sure how much better we can do with that either. There's really not much missing there. Um, I don't know, as far as like standardizing or normalizing ranges or something like that, I suppose you could gain uh, gain some there. Um, but yeah, uh, really looking forward to maybe getting in here and trying some of these individual models like um, like a random forest just using the the tool here getting in using the model comparison tool and doing a stepwise regression um, and just see see if we can refine that model a little further with some more manual methods. But for today, well done. Um, if you're if you're engaging in low code, no code data science, I am with you. And I hope that this introduces you to something else that you can use uh, in your data science journey other than just becoming one of these people that's just cranking out uh, volumes of code day in, day out. So with that, Semper Fidelis, and I will talk to you later.